Belfast, where the Lagan and Farset rivers meet. Its Irish name is Belfastia, mouth of the Sandy Ford. Humans have made a home here since ancient times, but it is only since the 1800s that the city became an industrial powerhouse and gateway to the world. Crisscrossed by rivers, surrounded by hills, and pushing into the sea, it has always been a bustling centre for other inhabitants. Filmed over a year, this is the story of the wilder side of Belfast. Told by residents who find the peace and solace of the natural world right here in the city. It's spring, while commuters rush to their warm offices to escape the morning chill. The hidden corners of Belfast are also active with the work a new season brings. On the Lagan, the river's management team are cutting back reeds and clearing debris before birds begin to nest. The midday sun is burning brighter. Nights are shortening. Dawn is getting earlier. On the Belfast Hills to the west, Aaron is on his regular early morning patrol of Black Mountain. I love coming up here in the mornings. When you're down there, you're always around concrete and noise, and when you come up here, you just feel like I'm definitely the only person up here today. <laughs> you know, and you've got the place to yourself, and it's just real peace. Aaron is a local conservationist, and Black Mountain has become his own personal reserve. I'd grown up in Bal Murphy, it was always just a 15 minute walk, so for all my friends, this is our playground when we were younger. You can see some fox tracks. And then there's Pay Martin there. So there's some about close. So I have a camera sitting in these trees in here. Um, there should be some foxes on it, move, moving up and making their way up and down the path. There should be a big dog fox will pass us by. And this is his territory, so he's always passing about here. That's the dog fox there. Says him, isn't he massive? It's the last wee stronghold, it's the last wee bit of natural wilderness on the hills. There's places where you can't even walk through, spots where humans can't go. And that's the way it should be. In Africa to have it, in South America, everywhere. So why can't we? Maybe something down there, actually. Hear the cuckoo? That's the first time I've ever heard one of them up here. That's the first time a cuckoo, I've ever heard a cuckoo on this mountain. That is crazy. And they come from the Congo, and, and they're, on the, they're on the Black Mountain. Madness. <laughs> when I started surveying, I have a list of birds which I need to see around this mountain. More or less, over the years, I've ticked them all off. I've heard the woodpecker, so the cuckoo's the last one. So that's everything. Spring is taking hold in the city. To the south, Minoburn allotments are bursting with the potential a new season brings. There are 30 plots here. One is tended by harpist Eileen. This allotment is about five miles from Belfast city centre. I remember someone put it really well 
when they were talking about things like this, they said, the planet and the world are not the same thing. They said, you, we can be on the same planet, being it, but be in a different world. I've put in organic mushroom compost in each of these beds. All these little microbes and fungi, they're doing their thing. That's actually why I'm not disrupting them too much because they already know what to do. And all I need to do is really just watch the magic show. Swarm of beekeepers. The allotments at Minnowburn are also based to the Belfast Beekeepers Association, who keep 20 hives in an effort to boost the population of the native black bee. Damien has been helping breed these bees for 12 years. Well, once in work call me bumblebee, just to annoy me. Which most people who don't know about bees confuse with honeybees. So all the top here's honey. All underneath here's pollen. So they bring the pollen in their legs and pack it down into the cells, roughly halfway down. And they use that as food source. There's a bee with the pollen on its legs, hasn't put it into the cell yet. Very remote hives tend not to do too well because of uh, pesticides and what have you spread in crops. City bees have all the lovely public parks and everybody's gardens they can go to. I would say the city bees probably produce more honey. It's just that getting that last wee squeeze. There we go now. There we go. Birth. Fantastic. They'll walk around now and it'll look for nectar or honey. It's only brand new, so it's still like, it's up like slightly furry, straight away straight getting to something to drink. Spring, it's a good word because it's kind of an action word. Spring is really about the, a new beginning. You can see all the beautiful green shoots, everything's starting to renew itself. Planting the new things, renewing and regenerating the soil, putting something in so that it can take it out later. There's something very special about being outdoors, in contact with nature. I grew up in a household where there was domestic violence. As a child, that was horrendous to witness and very hard to process. Probably then no surprise that later in life I was in a relationship that was of a similar kind because that probably shaped my expectations when I was young. There's kinds of things I've experienced and probably people don't talk about these things perhaps because, you know, they would feel ashamed or feel they're the only person these things have happened to. But for example, um, things like, you know, being near death, facing situations that were very violent and perhaps thinking that your life was going to end at that moment. Um, but you know what? I'm still here. The whole city is buzzing with the promise of spring. A promise that shouts, here I come again. What will this year bring? At Craiga Glen, the bluebells are ringing out in their full resplendent glory. In the harbor, seals are warming in the sun. In a part of Belfast known as the Holy Lands, it's the end of Friday prayers. Just in time for Tofik to take part in another round of the Africa Cup of Nations. It's part of the street soccer charity that helps asylum seekers and refugees from all over the world find a sense of belonging on playing fields.